life we're supposed to live now. A pre creditless seamless version of new Doctor Who without any bits. And we just, just go straight into the title? Thing, um, th I don't know how to deal with this. This has just uprooted my entire concept of existence. I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know how to deal with... Maybe I'm slightly overreacting. Title. Beep. Tesla, Nikola, impeccable dread. Beep. Which is a vlog YouTube video kind of thing on the internet, in case you hadn't noticed. This is Doctor Who Series 12, Episode 4, Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. That was running well good, wasn't it? Yeah, I really like this episode. Like, I know Orphan 55 was a bit middling and some people said it was like, the worst episode of Doctor Who ever, like ever, which is like, no, it's not the worst episode ever. It's probably not even the worst episode of New Who, but you know, the internet is binary, everything is black and white, you can't have nuance or, you know, sliding scales, it has to be the best or the worst, no in-betweens. Luckily you have me, and I'm here to talk to you about Nikola Tesla, it's Night of Terror. Right, so this is like one of those Doctor Who historicals where the Doctor meets somebody famous which New Who really loves the ever-loving crap out of ever since Christopher Eccleston met Charles Dickens. I think they've had like at least one a series like David Tennant met Agatha Christie and Shakespeare and uh, Matt Smith met... Matt Smith also met people, I'm fairly sure of it. And Matt Smith met Vincent Van Gogh, so there's a lot of these things. And it's pretty good. I like this aspect of the series. Like, ah, throw in a random character from history in there somewhere, cook, cook up some weird, quirky alien and have them deal with it. And this episode delivers exactly what it says on the tin. Nikola Tesla is not having the greatest time of his life. Which, if you know Nikola Tesla, is his life. I feel like this episode is a bit bare bones because it doesn't really do anything, it doesn't really push the envelope, but what it does, it does very well. It's fun, it's exciting, there's a great concept for aliens, it doesn't mince any words when it comes to Thomas Edison, except maybe it just showers Nikola Tesla with a little bit too much praise because he, in the end he was still human and had some very damnable qualities, but you know, in the end, even the best of us aren't without the worst qualities and even the worst of us have some redeeming factors about them. So let's just ignore actual history for a moment and just look at this episode. So this is basically about the life of Nikola Tesla and how he's a brilliant inventor who came up with the radio and like wireless electricity and thought he was communicating with Mars and it was all brilliant. And I. I can't say anything really bad about this episode. Not really. It's like, it's a solid 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10. Like, it won't go down in history as the most brilliant bit of television ever, but it did exactly what it set out to do. It was an episode of Doctor Who and it entertained us thoroughly. At least it entertained me thoroughly. The plot goes thusly. Nikola Tesla is being, you know, Nikola Tesla and then some aliens show up and then the aliens want to have Nikola Tesla and I am not arachnophobic, right? I am quite sturdy in my self-being that I don't have an irrational fear for anything I can think of. I'm not afraid of spiders, not afraid of scorpions, not afraid of big creepy crawlies like giant millipedes, like that stuff doesn't even live around here. So any fear I might have <laughs> would probably be like completely rational. But 
There's a bit in this episode where the camera pans up and we see the inside of the alien du jour, the monster of the week, the Scythra. And the Scythra are like these giant scorpions. And I, as I said, I am not arachnophobic, but that gave me the heebie jeebies. That just made me go like, ooh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And the Scythra are. I, they feel new-ish. They feel like a, a new concept. Like, this hasn't really been done before in Doctor Who, I think. Doctor Who has a very extensive history over 50 years, and I can't recall every single story out there. Especially when you count in uh, the expanded universe, like the audio stories, or the comic books, or the novels, of which I've read none, and I've only listened to, like, a third? half of what Big Finish has put out. So let me put it like this. An alien race of scavengers that just slap together every bit of technology they can find in the shape of human suit wearing arachnid scorpion aliens. That's a tautology. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool, that's pretty clever. So maybe you could say they are a bit like the Rachnos from The Runaway Bride. But that's a giant spider queen lady, and these were giant scorpions. It's very hard to make something that's similarly and make it thusly unique that it's, it's it doesn't mash up. It's like the Ood. The Ood are like the Senzoids. The Senzoids? Citation needed. I'm gonna put the text flipping over here so you know what I'm talking about. The Scythra work as a body of the week. That's all we really needed from them. And Thomas Edison shows up and he's a jackass because Thomas Edison in real life was a jackass because he electrocuted an elephant. No, really, he electrocuted an elephant. He's a jackass. Oh, what more can I say about this? It's, it's, it's pretty good. I loved it. <laughs> like, you can like something and have it be okay or okay to good without needing to go on about how it was the most brilliant thing ever. So next week we have the Fugitive of the Judoon, which features the return of the Judoon, which haven't been an active bad guy since Smith and Jones, all the way back in series three, which was the first time I watched New Who on television because I didn't know they'd done a remake. I just hope they do a little bit more more creative with those big rhinos, because what else are you going to do that isn't a retread of the original? Right, so please let me know what you thought of Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror, especially if your opinion differs from mine, because you're allowed to be wrong, obviously, seeing as I'm the one making a video and put it on the YouTube. <laughs> I'm the correct opinion here. So YouTube has an algorithm you can influence by l clicking like or dislike, so don't do either of those things. Don't leave a comment down, wait, I just said leave a comment down below. Don't subscribe. Don't do anything that upsets the natural balance of existence. Just watch some television and please just remember that uh, stuff, yeah, stuff. Why? Don't know why. Haunting you! Next. Seven.